our individual belief systems, also called our worldview, is a basis for how we interact with the world. Such that it is, our belief system is intertwined with our emotions. In casual terms, this part of our mind's workings, the level of understanding and logical assumptions we make, is also known as our perception of the big picture. So in explaining my personal slant on belief, I'm going to start out with the biggest picture humans have ever attempted to paint. Behind me is a Wilkinson microwave anisotropy image. This image expresses the basics of the Big Bang Theory. The theory proclaims our universe is finite originating from an infinitesimally small singularity. The scientific community puts forth this theory as solid science and for the most part fails to present the limitations of it. They do not discuss the contradictions within the theory itself, let alone conflicts with observations. They hypothesize dark matter and all sorts of unproven ancillary theories to support the Big Bang, making their theory workable. Yes, studying the size of the universe is on the fringe of human comprehension because it is immense. That is, even if it were to be proven finite beyond any doubt. By the elaboration which scientists go through in order to prove the universe to be finite, something besides science is taking place. There must be some primeval genetic motive at work. The extent to which a finite universe is supported is greater than or coming from somewhere other than the limitations of our cognitive ability to rationalize infinity as a property the universe may or may not possess. My personal opinion is that no matter how dedicated and able to think pragmatically and realistically, how accurately their observations are to matching the actual occurrences and data, they are prone to producing the results their bosses, the money managers, desire. So we cannot blame the scientists for the false conclusions and indoctrination rather than true skeptical knowledge that is presented to us by the powers that be. Those who control science are motivated by power and profit rather than sharing knowledge. In other words, I believe in a universe that is infinite in time, space, and energy, and I remain skeptical of the reasoning behind the school of the finite universe. I ranted on about the fallacy of the Big Bang Theory in an earlier video titled The Big Bang Dummy Up Theory. Here, I am going to limit my proofs in debunking the Big Bang to two main points explained a couple of different ways. If nothing, no space, no time, no energy existed out of the singularity before the Big Bang, what is the universe expanding into beyond the 13.7 billion or so light year limit they set on the universe in the first place. What is the universe expanding into at this very moment then? What force could have held this gigantic finite singularity in place on a pinhead before the Big Bang happened? Scientists who tell us of the Big Bang 
also tell us of black holes. If a black hole's gravity sucks in everything, including light, at such a rate of acceleration that when any mass or light reaches its event horizon, everything is pulled into it at or greater than the speed of light, a black hole is certainly not empty. So why would whatever exists beyond the rim or perimeter of the universe, beyond the magic 13.7 billion light years, consist of nothing? I believe that just like the rulers of the flat earth dark ages, rulers of today are hung up on power and control. They decide what is true and what they decide to be true is true regardless of any skepticism or observations that would be counterintuitive to what they state to be true. Our leaders who control our society to a great extent retain and maintain the ability to prove phenomena right even if it is wrong. I think the establishment is afraid of an infinite universe because it would deplete and make illegitimate their justification of their authority and wealth. Yes, infinity would level the playing field and their agenda designed to keep themselves in power and wealth without a meaningful contribution to society would no longer be acceptable to the masses, the majority, the populace. Their derelict rule for sake of their individual, family, elite, class, wealth, and power would be over. In 1999, scientists used the Hubble telescope to estimate that there are 125 billion galaxies in the universe. Since then, with a new and improved telescope, the Hubble satellite has observed twice as many galaxies in the same space they tested. So that means that there are at least 250 billion galaxies in the universe. A supercomputer predicts that there are at least 500 billion galaxies in the observable universe. NASA states that as observations keep on going and astronomers explore more of our universe, the number of galaxies detected will increase. Now that hardly sounds like a finite Moving universe. a bit closer to home, NASA scientists have observed parts of the sky and counted stars in those parts. <clears throat> they have extrapolated these counting samples to conclude that there are somewhere between 100 and 400 billion galaxy stars in the Milky Way Town galaxy. They further predict that of these hundreds of billions of stars, 8.8 .8 billion of them likely have solar systems containing planets similar enough to Earth to support biological life. Now why did I get so involved with such a scientific materialistic study of the nature of the universe to introduce you to my personal belief system? I believe a finite universe worldview limits our curiosity and creativity. Once they get you to submit to their ideology, they own you. It is like voluntarily accepting serfdom. They come to own your very thoughts. That is where shamanism comes in and why I chose 
to present a shamanistic belief system centered around infinity. A shaman does not present their knowledge as the only way. In fact, infinite shamanism, as I define it, has no singularity. It is exact opposite of singularity. The way infinity within an infinite universe could be properly approached. I'm not telling or even asking you to believe in an infinite universe. This belief system is such that you can opt out at any time. The world view associated with synonymous with an infinite belief system has no hold over you or the nature of the planet and the universe. If this light speed perimeter were true, the universe is floating in a sea of beyond light speed dimension rather than a sea of nothing. So from my perspective, the question is no longer whether or not the universe is infinite. The question is what place and purpose will humanity inhabit within the infinite universe. Now let's get down to earth. Here behind the entire me, video now screen is planet Earth as we know it from a satellite image. Here is a view of the other side just to show a lack of favoritism. Here are satellite photos of Earth at night showing human-made electrical light which illustrates the immense impact humanity is having on Earth. And now a tour of the planet using Google Earth. A video format change makes the Earth look oblong top to bottom here. The Earth is round within about one three hundredths of its radius, just a little flatter at the poles. The universe, on the other hand, remains what it is no matter what we perceive it to be. The proper perspective of the Big Bang is not necessarily the proper perspective of the universe, as you can see. Presently, we, the family of humanity on planet Earth, are about 7.1 billion people. The surface area of Earth, mostly covered with water, is about 197 million square miles, and the land area is about 57 million square miles. If the land of Earth were divided equally among us, or to consider the overall density of our population, there is about one person to every five acres of land on the average. In the US we have about seven acres per person if we include the frozen tundra of Alaska. The more people the less resources we have to share. We are already depleting our resources faster than nature regenerates them, yet the antiquated delusional immoral experts of economic theory tell us we need and must demand growth in population and human materialistic impact if we are to have a healthy economy and a job. This is absolute insanity and the traditional religious worldview, at least in the Americas, is obviously part of the problem instead of part of the solution. I was born and raised into Christianity, which is part of the Judeo-Christian Islamic religious one God orientation. Although I believe in the nature of the universe rather than one God, I am fine with people believing in that God so long as they are fine with me believing in an infinite universe. In fact, within all human history upon earth, there has never, ever been just one God, let alone just one church through which to worship that 
one God. In fact, there is a rich human culture and heritage, including worship in thousands of gods and goddesses. They are all part of who we are and what do you know? There is room for all of them and more as part of the all-inclusive practice of infinite shamanism.